Hello, my name is Andrew Bobier. Um, I'll be presenting, be presenting with our mod Blue today on plasmodic solar cells. Quick overview will be done before we, be, we dive into uh, the good stuff. Uh, we'll go through a quick abstract, uh, we'll go through a brief introduction, we'll go over the materials, technology, operation, the structures, as well as the efficiency. Um, we'll also go through limitations before we wrap it up with the conclusion, and then we'll cover our references as well. So the big question is, why are we so interested in photovoltaic systems? Our main interest is to create a renewable energy, a cleaner energy to sustain our lives. Over the last many decades, we've used uh, fossil fuels, oils, gases, and coal to power our everyday lives, but those seem to have become inefficient in the near future. They should be depleted. Um, so photovoltaics and renewable energies will need to increase. And as the, as the demand is also increased, we find ourselves heavy in research in order to create new systems. And that's where plasma, plasmonic, um, photovoltaic systems come into play. Our next subject that we'll cover will be plasmonic materials. Plasmonic solar cells consist mainly of metallic and non-metallic uh, metals which they infuse into PV systems that we currently use to increase efficiency um, and other things that we'll get into a little later on. But the materials that we'll be talking about today are gold, silver, copper, and aluminum. And to the <clears throat> right here, I have some examples of how they infuse the metallic and uh, non-metallic nanoparticles into the solar system. So here in uh, number A, <clears throat> we have the metal systems at the very top of the uh, solar cell. Um, so as you see here, the UV light comes into the cell is refracted back into the cell to increase the efficiency. We also have B here as well, where the metallic uh, gold, silver, aluminum, copper is embedded in between the solar cell as to also allow the UV system to accept and refract off the UV light coming into the cell. And here we have the metallic system at the rear, where we also have the UV system the UV rays coming in and scattering from left to right to help the efficiency of the system. Our next section will consist of structure and operation of a plasmonic solar cell. <clears throat> we'll start off with the structure of our plasmonic solar cell. Uh, plasmonic solar cells uh, essentially are constructed of metals, dielectric, metal oxide, and uh, doping is done as with the dielectric as well from time to time. Um, in figure A, we have our material, our, we have a cross section of our plasmonic solar cell. On the top layer, we'll see that we have metal. In this case, we're using gold. Uh, next section, we'll have our dielectric, which consists of silicon dioxide or <clears throat> silicon nitride. In some cases, doping is done to the titanium dioxide to help with the uh, electron flow, which we'll see in figure C. Um, the operation is fairly simple. On the top layer, there's a, a surface etching with uh, silver or gold or aluminum or copper nanoparticles, which help to allow the photo, uh, photovoltaic cell or the plasmonic cell to absorb more light and therefore create a stronger electron flow to give to the resistive load, which is our house or whatever else we're trying to power. Um, our next section will consist of plasmonic efficiency. Hello, everyone. I'm Armand Blé. Our project is plasmonic solar cell. Plasmonic solar cell is type of solar cell that convert light into electricity using plasmon. Plasmon are coherent and collective electromagnetic wave. So I'm going to talk about plasmonic efficiency, plasmonic limitation, and the conclusion. Plasmonic efficiency. By introducing plasmonic nanostructure inside, inside solar cell, 
is increase light absorption. Plasmon near free electron at interface between two material induce plasmonic effect around metallic nanostructure, increasing light absorption, so increase solar cell efficiency. Plasmonic limitation. There are several issues in plasmonic nanostructure technology. The first one is the high cost of some material like gold or silver because of the scarcity. The second is nanostructure met metal stability. It's very difficult to control the stability of nanostructure. The third, there are significant loss at short wavelengths in the visible and UV domain caused by interband electronic transition of metal. Also, metal can be easily degraded in, in harsh manufacturing environment, such as the excessive heat, oxygen, and moisture. Conclusion. Plasmonic FA is a valuable means to improve the solar cell efficiency through the nature of coexistence of electron and photon in confine. Nanostructural metal surface, the increasing optical absorption, extended wavelength range, and efficiency exciton. The solution can be achieved by the plasmonic FA when metallic nanostructures are embedded within the organic cell device. Nevertheless, several issues need to be addressed to ensure that plasmonic can be applied to photovoltaic. Noble metal like silver or gold are expensive material, and they need to tailor the pattern of these metal to attain optimal plasmonic functionality may be limited their application, their practical ap ap application. There is growing interest to develop viable plasmonic property using inexpensive noble metal like graphene, iodium tin oxide, aluminum, or semiconductor as alternative. Thank you for listening.